Hi, Ben Forto with Adobe's Platform Evangelism team. And I'd like to give you a brief tour of some of the features in the new ColdFusion Builder uh, that's released together with ColdFusion 9. Now, ColdFusion Builder is an IDE. It's a development tool, a development environment uh, designed for um, not just writing code, but also simplifying your entire ColdFusion development process um, so that everything from access to log files and wizards and help and shortcuts and so on. And there's a lot to the tool, uh, but when developers first start using ColdFusion Builder, uh, they're often not sure where all the goodies are hidden, and so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of some of the things that I think you really need to know about ColdFusion Builder. Now, here on the screen, you see um, ColdFusion Builder already open, uh, no files open yet. Uh, you'll see on the left, by default, um, I have the files, folders, and projects. Um, on the right, there are a series of panels for outlines and data view and so on. Uh, the bottom, access to servers. Now, all these panels actually can be moved around, and I'll show you one in a moment. Um, the servers panel is where you define the servers you're working on, and you should always have at least one there, um, ideally the local server you do development on. When you right-click or when you use these buttons over here um, on, the top of the, uh, on top of the panel, uh, you'll see a series of options for restarting a server, stop, start, and some interesting options like launching the administrator. This will take you to the ColdFusion administrator um, for the server that you're looking at, and launch the server monitor directly. The server monitor um, is the uh, flash-based monitoring tool that was introduced in ColdFusion 8 and has been enhanced in ColdFusion 9, and you have access to it directly from inside the tool, which is really good. That way, as you're developing code, you can look at the monitor and see the impact and performance on the server and so on. The services browser panel lists all of the services on your server. So it'll scan the server, find call future components, find services, and you can browse through and see the servers you want and see their descriptions. Now, this is an example of a panel I actually like to move. I find that uh, the services browser really doesn't have a lot of room down here. So uh, you can just take any panel you want and drag it elsewhere, and I'm going to drag it up top to the right, and there you've got a much better view of what your services look like. Now, these are automatically saved in the ColdFusion perspective um, for, the, um, for the workspace in, in a ColdFusion Builder. So if you quit and come back again, things will be exactly where you left them. One other very important uh, panel down here that a lot of people don't know about is tail view. Now, what this lets you do is monitor log files on your server. Now, when you're doing development um, in ColdFusion, you get error messages on the screen, and you have access to debugging. Uh, but what would really be nice is to see information that ColdFusion puts into its log files, either um, automatically or if you make it do so. And the builder can do that. The builder can monitor your log files as many as you want and show you always the last few entries in the log file updated automatically. To do that, all I need to do is hit the Add Log button. It will ask me where my uh, ColdFusion server is. So let me go to my server quickly and pick the Logs folder. And here you'll find all your log files. And there are some you really want to pay attention to, including the application log is a really important one. The server log is an important one and the exception log. And there are others. You can actually do all of them, but these are the ones that are really important. But you'll notice right away the, log, the panels are already showing me all the last entries, what occurred, date, time, what problems were. And this will happen automatically. As you're working with code, if those log files change, the latest entries will automatically be updated and reflected in this panel. That's really important and, and, and really good to know. All right, then comes the editor itself. So let's open a file quickly. You'll see things like color coding automatically. So as you work with tags and functions, ColdFusion will give you the necessary help. Um, if you are typing and hit space, you'll get a pop-up asking you um, of what attributes you need, and you'll see help automatically provided for each attribute as you highlight it. It tells you the de details about it. Um, there are shortcut uh, uh, buttons at the top. So if you have a block of code, you can click to wrap it in an output block. Um, even a tag wizard that you can pop up to show you every tag available for various versions of the language and see all the details and insert them right inside the code uh, to help you find the code you need. Um, there is an outline view on the right. This will show you an outline of your page with the various tags and their relationships to each other. And you can jump between them, and you'll see how it automatically highlights and moves the code for you. Uh, there is a, a, a RDS panel, which connects via RDS services to your server to show you all of your data sources as they're defined. And you can zoom into them, see the table, see the schema, actually view table contents, uh, and so on. And this is really useful. It also lets you drag and drop. So as you're working uh, with queries, you can drag the table name right into your code or the column name to your code as well. And then on the file, um, on the navigator on the left, as you right click, you'll also see options relevant to your code to run, debug, search, and so on. Now, a couple of other really useful things. Uh, for example, if you're, um, I've got a CF query um, up in the page over here. If I do a CF output query equals, Notice how it automatically popped up and knew the name of the queries. So query and put the right one in there automatically for me. Um, even data sources. And the data source obviously is optional, but if I do specify, sorry, let's go back up to the code over here. If I go to the query and do a 
a data source equals, notice how automatically knows the names of all the available data sources as defined in the Cold Fusion server. So it's a very intelligent IDE and it will w watch your code and help you uh, help you write good code and, and give you hint hints and pointers as to what goes where. Uh, notice also the little red X there telling me that I've got an output, a CF output that isn't closed. So as you, as you close this, automatically that will go away and error has been resolved. So the editor in real time is giving you feedback about your code. Um, there's one other really important feature I want to show you um, in the builder. And uh, we realize that this is a, a new tool, Cold Fusion Builder. This is something we've just built now, and we do plan to, uh, to keep updating it and revving it and giving you lots of new features. Uh, we also know that we've got a, a very loyal, very active community that would love to build their own extensions. And you can. Eclipse is an open platform, and you can write your own plugins. Uh, but here's the catch. Eclipse plugins are written in Java, and most Cold Fusion developers are not Java developers. Uh, and so as part of Cold Fusion Builder, we built a framework to allow you to build extensions to the tool in CFML itself. Uh, and already, the community has built a whole variety of extensions that you could drop in, um, and they become part of the development environment. And I'm going to show you one and explain how they work. Uh, but the important thing is that you yourself can build your own extensions, uh, and we strongly encourage the community to do that. So let me look at this, this code I was over here. Let's actually close this file and reopen it again. Uh, this is actually a, a good example of really, really bad code. Um, look at this code over here. This is a, a simple database query and an output block. And if I run the code, it works, right? It, I can run it, and it shows all the data um, right there inside of the tool. This is actually really, really dangerous code. This code is the, the Cold Fusion equivalent of hanging a please hack me sign up on your door. This code over here is asking for a SQL injection attack, right? There's no, nothing protecting that variable being passed in. Now, this is really easy to resolve. Cold Fusion developers know you just use a CF query param tag, and it, it blocks that attack. And it's really important that you've got to do it. Um, now, what if the tool could check your code for you and let you know if you're missing any of those really important CF query param tags? It's a nice idea. Unfortunately, that's not a feature in Cold Fusion Builder. Uh, but it is a feature that one of our community built. And so um, if you go to um, uh, riaforge.org, you'll see a lot of extensions there already. Uh, and there'll be others posted elsewhere. Um, and you can find extensions people have written, and they're distributed as zip files. And you'll see one there called a CF query param scanner uh, built by the community's very own Ray Camden. Now, over here, if I want to install that, I have the zip file now locally. I've downloaded it. I just go to Preferences and go to Cold Fusion and go to Extensions. And you see a whole series of extensions already installed. I've got a model glue assistant, um, a variable scope checker, code generators, an action script generator, lots of them. And I'm going to install another one. So let me t tell it where my, my desktop. This is, the, this is the zip file with the query scanner. And up pops the install wizard. This checks for missing query param statements. Next. Accept the license. Next. And again, it asks me what server do I want to work with. So I want to work with my local server. Next, that's all I need, finish. And it says installation is successful, I'm done. I now have a new extension installed. And if I right click or click in the uh, navigator, you'll see it there. So take my folder, and now a new option there, query param scanner, and I can run find. And off it goes, and instantly comes back and tells me it searched two files, and here's a problem. On this file, lines three to six, my SQL statement is missing its query param, and it warns me of the problem. Nice example, really, really useful, uh, and a great demonstration of the extensibility built into Cold Fusion Builder. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of these extensions coming. Um, Adobe will be creating some ourselves. The community will as well. Uh, and this just really helps uh, round out and create the, the ideal Cold Fusion development experience. Uh, for more information about Cold Fusion 9 and the Cold Fusion Builder, uh, you should visit the Cold Fusion Developer Center on Adobe Developer Connection. Thank you.